method on how to do a little review. <laughs> that's on Learn More 365. So it's something I've been thinking about yeah. for a long time. And I've never, ever, ever been given that piece of advice. And it's actually a good idea because as I think about it, I'm thinking you, you, you do a search strategy, it finds a few papers, you work through those papers and suddenly you start refining what your inclusion and exclusion criteria should be because you're actually doing it. You start realizing that the population you're looking at is too big or too small. You refine that. So you go through the motions and suddenly your actual research question itself can be something you revisit based on what you've seen. And now, now then you're good to go. Now, now you're bringing up some, uh, uh, let, let's just say this is the sausage uh, that no one wants to talk about. And I think that even my rule of thumb is probably a little controversial. I think there's some reviewers out there who would say, you need to draft your comprehensive research strategy without looking at the underlying records. Otherwise, you're, uh, you're not using sort of a structured a priori approach, right? A lot of people say, you need to have a search strategy and then execute it. Otherwise, you're not, um, you're, you're not executing on a uh, basically a prospectively planned study. But reviewing to me, is an activity where you should be trying your very best to find relevant records. And as long as you keep a good audit trail, uh, mm, which again, we do automatically you. in our software, and this is probably why others haven't done it this way. As long as you keep a good audit trail of what you searched, what you brought back, what you did with those records, I don't think there's any problem with revising your strategy yeah. as you go. In fact, as you say, it reflects the imperfection of search strategy. Um, yeah. Even if you're just searching in PubMed, there are 30 million articles uh, uh, on PubMed. Mm. And if you can narrow 30 million, down to the 0.0001% that you need with a perfectly crafted search strategy from the start, then you don't need to do what I said. But for the rest of us mortals, I find that that sort yeah. of try and revise and, and living uh, uh, editable approach is, is really how you get to find all of the best articles. And really like that approach really is consistent with the, the, the principle of research where you're really making an effort to do a better job. It's not, it's, it's different from a researcher that's undertaking research, let's say it's not literary review, you know, you're doing any, any other kind of research and halfway through the process revises their methodology so as to better identify, better come to a conclusion that they wanted in the first place. This is a very different process whereby in the early stages, you start slowly and make sure that what you're doing works in terms of identifying the right population, the right interventions and the right outcomes that are meaningful and you're able to find the papers that can reflect that uh, that that knowledge set in the literature. So I think what you've just described actually to me is in any research I do going forwards in terms of lit review, I will definitely be doing what you've just said. Absolutely. And uh, just to uh, jump in and give you a concrete example of this. Uh, so as I said, I, I designed stroke devices uh, for a living before nested knowledge. And there's a lot of research in, in stroke.